to be treated special out in the public is a kind of curse. You see, people wanted to harm the Buddhas, even though he never did anything. But to anybody, all he did was preach to help people, to elevate and meditate it. When out begging, even, and even wore tattered clothes. Not even wearing luxury clothes like my design I have to wear now, or even jewelry or anything. Even then, people still harm the Buddha. His own family member, even, Devadatta. I have some Devadatta in our group. This is a human tendency. They are programmed to do that. Even uh, the Buddha, he wear tattered clothes. He wear just, you know, monk's robe. Nothing, nothing shining like I do. Even then, people still want to kill him. Luckily, only one of his toes got uh, cut. But still, you see, this is the world that we live in. You are never safe when you are in the public eye. Of course, we are not safe in many different private ways. You know, we have enemies sometimes. Some people envy us in a private uh, environment. But the one in the public eye is even more so in danger, always. There are always people who are jealous of them, who feel that they are the enemies. You know, because you take up a position in the people's hearts and people worship you like you, love you. And there will always be people who are jealous of you, thinking bad about you, sending bad energy to you, or doing some kind of uh, sorcery, etc., etc. Yes. So to be in the public eyes is already very bad. Not to talk about having to bear the name <laughs> Supreme Master this and that, and I have to wear a high heel shoes, have to wear beautiful clothes, have to decorate yourself with jewelry and stuff like that. That's even the worst case of <laughs> risk. Yeah. So I'm not enjoying anything. I'm just doing my job. Whatever is assigned to me, whatever I have signed in the contract with the lower world in order to be here to help others, I bear it all. Do not envy me. If you were in my position, you will know it's not a life that you wish to have. So being a normal person anonymously is the best blessing. Even if you don't have a lot of money, you have enough to use. That's the best in the world to live with. Never wish for anything else. Whatever we have, that's what's given to us. That's what we have to live with. So even the luxury clothes, the jewelry and all that, even though I do it to earn money, but it's also given to me because of my merit or my job that I have to do. I have to do that, do this, okay? <laughs> so please cut off any negative jealousy in your heart. Today is only one person, but I know sometimes there are more. Please cut it all out for your own sake. Today I don't come out, not because I'm afraid of you. I have protection. If I know already, I can have protection and come out. It won't harm me physically today. But I don't want to. I want to let all of you know that you should never ever have any negative tendency or jealousy towards the Master because it's bad, bad, bad for you. Today I do this so that you will remember and others also will learn that we should always keep positive thinking. And you also have to know that the Master is not living on a bed of roses because heavy lies the head that bears the crown always since the beginning of the history of mankind. Queens and kings, they look good when they appear in the public, but they are not living good lives. Having to work with so many egos, so many competitive people around them, so many even envious enemies, seen or not seeing. Queen Victoria, yeah, she was supposed to be a very beloved queen, good queen even. 
But people even tried to assassinate her. And uh, one time her husband stopped it. Yeah, sacrificed himself, almost died. You know, but uh, he did it. Otherwise, maybe both of them would have been harmed as well, or, or she, at least the queen. Even the Buddha, you know already. And he was not giving people any excuse to be jealous of him, nothing. Even his own uh, cousin, you know, was envious of, of his uh, uh, so-called fame, position. But he earned it life after life, cowboys after cowboys, more than the uncountable then in the Ganges River. Still, he was jealous and envious, you know, and tried to harm the Buddha in many ways, and even gave him a bad food, and poisoned him to death. Yeah, the last meal he ate was poisonous. Maybe not on purpose, but maybe the bad thought caused the thing he ate to be bad. Yeah, bad energy, bad thinking, poisonous. That's why he died. The last meal he ate, he told all his monks, don't eat this meal, and he ate it himself. So maybe some of the monks, you know, who did not practice well, thinking, oh, the Buddha is so greedy, and hey, maybe that food is so good, that's why he wants to keep it all for himself. You understand? <laughs> Possible like that. But no, the Buddha just wanted to save their lives, or just to keep them well. Yeah. Many things the master does, you don't think negatively. That's the best way. That's all I can advise you. Because you never know why the master does this, why the master does that. He or she doesn't always have a chance to explain to you, or is not even allowed to always explain it to you. You know, due to time and organizing, you know, for people to come and explain. Normally, I don't explain these things, but today I think I will explain it once and for all for you to know, okay, that the Master's life is always at risk. There's always somebody there who has poison in their heart and harms the Master in different ways, not, not visibly to your eyes. That is the thing. Because, you know, like m black magical power, they, they are not visible to you, not all of you. Or some bad energy is not visible to you, bad vibe is not visible to you. Not always, but it's not, <laughs> it's not like it never happened. Yeah, it happened. All these decades, it happened. So sometimes Master got sick. Because he could not cancel the gathering or could not uh, explain it and all that kind of thing. So originally, I did not think that I would talk to you today and explain about this because it's negative things and I did not want to. But then heaven told me, tell them. Yeah, I thought, okay, then I will tell you. Do you understand now why I told you? Yes. I hope I don't have to tell you again. All the Taiwanese, do you understand now? Yes. Okay. And even sometimes it doesn't affect the Master, but affects other disciples, you know, who came and gather. It makes them do weird things or wrong things. So it harms them in some way also. Boosts their ego up suddenly or makes them feel suddenly important, and then they do some weird things. Just like now, I want to call and talk to you, and one person kept answering. And then I say, okay, now switch it on loud so that everybody can hear. He didn't do it. And I kept waiting so long, and then I had to cut it off. And I had to turn the phone off. And then I call again and told him, and then he didn't do it. Maybe he didn't know how. He didn't know how to handle this uh, telephone to turn it on loud, you know, to to connect it to the loudspeaker so all of you can hear. But if he did not know how, he should not sit there. Just because he's a manager or he's whatever big shot in here, it's not his job to be there. It's a job for the technician, for the technical, you know, personnel who handle it. Not because he's a manager, he can sit there. 
You understand what I'm saying? Yes. Not because you're a manager. You can just sit anywhere and do anything just because you are a big shot. No, that's the ego. Even your master, she's not pretending that she knows everything and doing everything. She's not going to connect the pipe for herself to get water. She's not going to connect electricity to have her lights on. You understand? Yes. Why? It's not my job. Even if I can, I won't do it. Unless it's emergency and nobody else around. But if you don't know anything about the technique, about microphone, about telephone, or loudspeaker, then you should not sit there and hinder the master to talk to the public, to the, the assembly. Do you understand? Yes. yes. And for that, you create a bad karma for yourself because it's concerning many thousands of people as a bad karma, a big accumulated collective karma on you. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. So don't think the master is so strict. He just answered the phone two times. He did not turn on the telephone for the public and master kick him out. No, not me. It's the karma that he made. Do you understand now? Yes. Taiwanese, you understand? Yes. Okay. 不要每次都怪师傅做这个做那个我是师傅为什么罚他不是他们自己造纸的业障懂吗 Good. okay? It's not the master that wants to punish this person or that person or kick that person out or fire that person. It's not. It's the accumulated karma they did for themselves. Do you get that? Yes? Yes. Okay. I keep repeating. You try to remember. Okay? It's serious. So your ego is your worst enemy. Don't ever let it come up. Before you do any action, think again. Oh, should I do this? Is it proper for me to do this? Is it good for me or not? Don't think about good of the world or anything yet. Just think, is it good for me to do this? If it's not, then don't. Whatever is not good for you because it's wrong, then it will be also automatically not good for people around you or any beings around you. Capish? Yes. yes. Right. So now you know everything. Uh, I mean, logically, I have explained it to you. So you could forgive me for not coming out today. Huh? I would have liked to. Okay? Yes. So now you can go home, whoever needs to go home, because they cannot do retreat. And whoever stay for retreat, just stay. Okay? Do your job, do your meditation. That's all you do. Okay? Yes. And I thank you for all the 1,000 plus uh, personnel who are sacrificing your time and your family uh, coziness or warm love to come here to help to run the errands, you know, however small or big, to keep the retreat smooth. Thank you for sacrificing your time and anything else that you like. In order to come here to help to do all the errands that I alone cannot do. So you also partake in the merit, in the assisting to help the world, to help your brother and sister in the retreat. And whenever you have time during your work or after your work, please also meditate wherever you are in your position, in your, in your job, in your situation, okay? So that you can also partake in the retreat after you work. During the time when you have five minutes, you sit, meditate. Two minutes, you sit, meditate in your uh, area, okay? In your office or in your kitchen or in your working or sleeping area, whatever, okay? You do. All of you should concentrate to meditate more intensively during this retreat, even if you do your work. <laughs> Uh, all of you understood everything I said? Yes. Okay, try to remember this, okay? Yes. All right, ciao for now, and I'll talk to you soon, okay? Yes. 
God bless you for supporting my ideal to help the world in any way. Okay? Thank you. Thank you anyway. Thank you. God bless you. Yeah, I mean, your heartfelt support, okay? I don't mean financial or anything. I mean, you support me in your heart. You love what I'm doing. And you support that ideal. Then you are also partaking or deriving the benefit from that ideal, okay? Even if you don't do anything, at least you support in your heart. You think Master is doing the right thing. Master is helping the world, and I'm very happy that she does that. I'm very supportive of her ideal that she's doing good for the world, for all beings, and I'm wishing her well, okay? That's good enough. Thank you very much. God bless you. Ciao.